it was creepy to know that that a perfect stranger could get access of such personal information. They say the best things in life are free But you can give them to the birds and bees I need money That's what I want. That's what I want. Ah. My name is Alina Litchfield. I'm 27 years old, and I was a victim of identity theft. Nothing makes me happier than to find out that a bunch of them are sitting around the local jail comparing notes about how I caught them. But it all started with my, my cell phone. Got a text message one day from, uh, from T-Mobile uh, thanking me for adding an additional line onto my credit. Then I got to thinking about that and started getting paranoid and I checked my credit and it was just, it was just a nightmare. I call it my big black book. Uh, my credit rating should have been at about 800. This is the impact on my scores. It starts out high. It starts going down to moderate and then to low. However, low has a whole nother page because they weren't done yet, so they just kept on going. Overall, everything totaled up together was uh, just over $8,000. We began a follow-up investigation that uh, involved contacting the Postal Service in investigators. Somebody was what they call mailboxing, so stealing things from people's mailboxes, unlocked mailboxes. Mail had been not only redirected, but electrical bills, gas bills, those sorts of things were being changed into these victims' names, but to pay for uh, these criminals' services at their house. I know that they had my address, and you know, when it's late at night, sometimes I'd be at home by myself. I was very, I was scared, yeah, because I don't, I don't know these people. I don't know who they know. I don't know what they're capable of. Could be some really unattractive, somewhat naked people in handcuffs. It's about 4:20 in the morning, and we are the search team. I don't think that they're expecting any guns, but anything is possible. Every time there's a surprise, though, there's going to be something that's going to be entertaining. Sitting, waiting for it to happen, we hear the machinery coming down the street. It's like, go, 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 go. It was packed with stuff. We couldn't look in a cupboard or open a closet without having something related to fraud fall out on us. It was amazing. They were clearly getting ready to use that information uh, against other people. Out of the hundreds of cases I've investigated in the last five or six years, there were maybe three that weren't related to methamphetamine. They want to make money fast, so they're the ones that go out and do car prowls and steal mail and do burglaries. They usually don't work. Fraud is their job. Finding more methamphetamine is what they live for. Coming out. All right. The people who do these types of crimes, they're looking for the quick hit. We found reams and reams of papers that had handwritten notes. We call them profiles containing uh, victim information, victims' names, dates of birth, addresses. What they had done, what they hadn't done, what they had used, what they hadn't used. Oh, my goodness. La, 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 la. Actually, paperwork of uh, other fraudsters I know. We also found computers, printers, monitors. And this was higher level of identity thief that we normally see. Angel Thompson was denying involvement in any of the fraud or identity theft that was going on. And she was pointing the finger back at her mother, saying she's doing it all. She's the one who's responsible. I was aware of it, but I wasn't part of it. 
and it was not two seconds later, we opened a closet up, found a backpack that she identified as hers, and when we opened it, all of these notebooks with handwritten profiles that had other people's names and dates of birth and all their personal and financial information handwritten out over and over and over again. How can you continue denying that you're not part of it? And, and, and it was at that point that uh, she decided that uh, she didn't want to be nice anymore. And it probably took me about, you know, four or five months on the phone, mailing letters on the phone, mailing more letters on the phone again to successfully reverse all the charges. I think we counted there may have been upwards of over 100 victims. The mother in the particular case agreed to a sentence of 75 months in prison and to pay restitution to the victims. The daughter is serving 45 months in prison and has also agreed to the restitution. Oh, I've been waiting like a year to, to see what these women look like and finally I get to see who did this to me. And... Ugh, makes me sick <laughs> that they did that to me. You may have gotten away with it up to this point. You may get away with it for a little while longer, but eventually it will all catch up with you. Somebody will put it together. They'll figure out what you're doing. They'll figure out where you're at, and they'll come get you. They are going to pay a hefty price. I was only one of hundreds of people in this specific case. I finally got my name cleared up in the very end. It's a ha it has a happy ending, so I'm very grateful for that.